You call her your girl friend and she's a good woman, but if she's your wife and she's pregnant and y'all got babies and you have a projection in life and the main projection in life is what? Our final end. Death and marriage is a teamwork towards helping each other get to heaven. When you're in a marriage, you're helping each other build virtue. That's what a marriage, that's really what a marriage is about. We're gonna help each other build virtue. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I have a girlfriend. Our relationship is stable and she's a good woman, but the relationship is not very exciting or satisfying for me right now. And I'm not sure that she really cares about my ambitious goals. As a man, how much of the responsibility of making the relationship work should you put on yourself versus on her? And what can you expect from her in terms of support towards your goals? Maybe we're not a good match. So I, let me address this goal things first because it's, it's, it comes from wrong thinking. And I used to have this wrong thinking too. I, I used to think the same way that you did, that my wife needs to be my cheerleader and she needs to want to know about my business and she needs to be involved and excited about it. I used to want that. And there was a, it was a part of me back in those days where I resented her. I was like, she doesn't understand my struggle. She's not as excited because I get excited about business because it's my mission, not hers. You got to understand this. And she wouldn't get as excited. So I, I actually started looking for other people to talk to. And so I, I found guys at my gym. So I was like, I realized, oh, I could talk to my boys about it. I don't need to talk to her about it. It's not necessary for your wife to be excited about the things you're excited about. In fact, it might be better that she's not excited about the things you're excited about because I see a lot of relationships where the couples are both excited about the same thing and they compete with each other. I've watched this. They compete with each other. I watch, I be, will be like in uh, group conversations with a couple and the husband might be saying something, right? And the husband, the wife will be like, well, cut him off. Be like, no, 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 no. Here's how it really is. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? Is she competing with her husband? Because they're both excited about the same thing. It may be something like trivial, like sports, right? But because they're both excited about it, they compete. And a woman that competes with you is not, a good, is not good to have around. So I've noticed that these guys that seek women, I want a woman that enjoys all the same things as me. You're going to grow resentful of her for a number of reasons. Number one, because, because it, another one of the reasons why is because the very thing that you love, now she comes into it and it can't be yours anymore. I've always loved training. I've always loved working out. My wife, had one, no interest in it. Don't even like working out. She didn't like working out. After she had started having children, she wanted to work out. And I was excited about that. I was like, oh, great. You want to work out. And so I started bringing her along in my workouts. And then quickly I realized, oh, this is messing my workouts out. I'm excited that she's excited about working out. But now, now I can't enjoy my thing anymore. <laughs> so we work out every once in a while. And she mostly does her thing because I spent a lot of time teaching her. But at the same time, it's not what it's all cracked up to be. These guys who want to work out with their girl at the gym, I think that's silly too, right? I don't want to be working out with my girl. I want my girl to be, I want my girl to be my girl. I want my training partner to be somebody that can push me. She doesn't need to care about your ambitious goals. She needs to care about whether or not you can provide for her and her children. That's the really is the only thing that matters to your woman, and it's and that's right. It's okay. She don't need to be excited about the details of your business or your work. She needs to be concerned that hey, can you meet the bottom line this month? Can do you have enough money to to take care of these damn kids and put food in their mouth? The the marriage relationship needs to be seen from a more practical standpoint. The relation and the reason why it doesn't we we don't see these our marriage relationship in a practical standpoint is because we get addicted to sexual feelings and emotional oxytocin releases, and that is all because of fornication. And so we become addicted to this good feeling, and we think that oh well everything with my wife needs to be feeling good. Everything we do needs to feel good. No, it just needs to be neutral. It needs to be practical. It needs to be stoic. It needs to be mutually beneficial but 
It doesn't need to be exciting. Which brings me to your next question. You're asking two questions in a way. You say that our relationship isn't very exciting. And then you say, she's not excited about my goals. Well, deal with the goal thing first because you're in resistance about her not being excited about your goals, which is going to make your relationship unexciting because you're wanting her to be excited about the things you're excited about. She don't need to be excited about the things you're excited about. Your relationship lacks excitement because your relationship probably has no purpose. As a man, you're excited when you have a purpose. That's what excites men. A project, something I'm projecting myself into, a mission that I'm on, it's something I'm creating, somewhere we're going. That's what a man does. He projects himself into the world. But if a relationship is not projected into the future, it's not projected into the world, it's a, it's a dumb, boring, useless relationship. You call her your girl friend, and she's a good woman, but if she's your wife and she's pregnant, and y'all got babies, and you have a projection in life, and the main projection in life is what? Our final end. Death and marriage is a teamwork towards helping each other get to heaven. When you're in a marriage, you're helping each other build virtue. That's what a marriage, that's really what a marriage is about. We're going to help each other build virtue. The excitement of watching that person grow in virtue, knowing that they're becoming more graceful, they're getting closer to God, and that we, at the, and when we meet God in the judgment, he'll say, you did a good job taking care of your husband and keeping him free from sin and helping him remain in a state of grace. Good job, young lady, old lady if she dies old. He's going to look at you and say, hey, good thing you weren't addicted to having good feelings and you wanted novelty because that's what men want. We want novelty, but it's effeminate. It's, a, it's part of our lower nature. Oh, you want novelty. Uh, good thing you took responsibility and led this woman with authority and helped her become sanctified in her soul by not fornicating with her, right? Because right now you, you're, you're sending her to hell. Right now, y'all are damning each other. God's going to call, have an account. He's going to ask you about that. Why are you damning? Why are you damning this woman? Why don't you make her a... Chastity isn't all about not having sex. Chastity is about reserving sex for the marriage contract. Why are you not bringing protection and boundaries around the sexual relationship that you're having with this woman. That's what God's going to ask you. You should be excited about getting out of that state of sin and bringing this woman along with you into the sanctif sanctification of your souls. That's exciting. That, I'm excited every day about my family, even though we do the same boring thing every day, week after week, because I have a vision. There's a reason why I'm doing the things I'm doing. I know where we're going. It's material, but it's also spiritual. I, I wanted to have a house for my family. Then I wanted to have land for my family. Then I wanted to homeschool my children. I wanted to homestead my children. I want to teach my daughters how to be good wives and my son a good husband. I want my children to have children because I want to be a grandfather. I can't wait to be a grandfather so that I can have a different relationship with my progeny. There's a different perspective between children and grandchildren. I want to experience that. I love watching my children grow, and I can't wa wait to watch my grandchildren grow. I can't wait to see how many grandchildren I'm going to have. I encourage my children to have children because I want 20, 30 grandkids. That's why I bought all this land. I'm excited to populate my property with progeny. But you don't have that because you're having sterile sex that's pointless. Sterile, pointless sex. That's what you're doing. You're hanging out with each other. You're fuck buddies. That's all you are with her. There's no excitement in having a, a, a F buddy. It will be satisfying when you have a reason for the relationship. 
Y'all are just wasting each other's time. You're just biding time with each other. And, and, and it loses excitement because sex isn't everything. Y'all got together because at first, I guarantee you were excited. Go back to the era, go back to the, the first few months of your relationship. Oh, oh, I can't wait. We're going to get together and we're going to have sex. But if you base your relationship on needing good feelings through sex, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail. And it doesn't mean that sex doesn't stay great. I have a wonderful sexual relationship with my wife. But, but sex isn't the purpose of the sex anymore. It's an exchange of loving feelings and appreciation for one another. We make love. Most people just having sex. They say, oh, we having love. Oh, I made love. You ain't making love. Because love is from the heart. Sex is from the cock. We just bone in. Love is from the heart. And you don't love this woman in the right way because you haven't made her your own. You haven't, you haven't protected her in the sacrament of matrimony. You haven't protected your relationship. There's no, there's no grace in your relationship. You forsake sacramental grace in your relationship. So it's bound. It's bound for sterility. It's bound for boredom. It's bound for one dimensionalism. And it's bound to fall apart. That's why people's relationships don't work. Because they have no vision for their relationships. They have no purpose other than momentary satisfaction for their relationships. As a man, how much responsibility of making the relationship work should you put on yourself versus her? What can you expect from her in terms of support towards your goal? Once again, none. Don't, she don't need to support any of your goals. She don't need to support any of your goals. She just got to keep you accountable for meeting those goals. The only thing my wife cares about my goals is that I'm meeting them. She doesn't care about the details of my goal. She don't even care what the goal is. She wants to know what the bottom line is. Hey, Elliot, can we pay the bills this month? That's the only thing she should really care about. I know I mentioned that already. I just have to reiterate it one final time. You say, how much responsibility should a man put on himself versus on her? That's equal. You don't put more responsibility on yourself than you put on her. And the reason why you're asking this question is not a matter of, of percentage of responsibility. That's not the real issue. The real issue is the foundation upon which your relationship is built on. Percentage don't matter how much you, how much her, if the relationship is not built on a foundation of future projection, if there's no goal for the relationship. You, have, you and I know you can make this work. I'm talking harshly towards you, but I know you know what it takes to make this happen because you have goals. You have goals in your business. You have goals in your work that you're excited about. Take that same attitude to your, relate to your goals in business or whatnot and give it to the relationship. You have to refresh your business with new goals. You got to refresh your, fa your relationship with new goals. You got to re refresh your family with new goals. When, when I have new goals, I see my wife differently. Especially when they're goals for her and us. Like I said, raising these children is an amazing goal. Most people, they, they don't even raise their own kids. And that's why they have all these negative feelings towards, oh, don't have kids. They're just going to ruin your life. Kids don't bring anything into your life but heartache and troubles. Kids are just going to ruin you. No. They ruin you when you let them ruin you by following the world's whim with regard to raising them. The more control I have over my family, the more I love them because I have more influence over them. That's why we're homeschooling. Make it a goal to put a baby in her belly and start homeschooling those kids. You'll never be bored. You'll never be bored. But you got to make those goals. You got to see that future. You got to project. Maybe we're not a good match. Match is not the issue at all. Match doesn't matter if you're playing the wrong game. And y'all are playing the wrong game. Maybe you're not a good match. Maybe you're not a good match for 
fornicating, cohabitating, and living in sin together, and, and your soul is starting to like beat you up about it, well, maybe you're a good match for marriage. You're just not playing that game yet. So that's my opinion on that. The issue is the state in which your relationship is in. Not what she's doing, not what you're doing, but the state of your relationship. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit makemenstrongagain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.